And now here's Warren Hull, who uses word, ma- word magic to turn back the pages of history. Thank you, Edward. Tonight, friends, I'm going to take you back 50 years. Together, we enter a stately southern dining room, two stories high, almost 200 feet long. The room is aglow with the light of many candles and the loveliness of gracious southern ladies dressed in crinoline, lace, and satin. The elegance of this magnificent setting makes our hearts beat faster and our senses quicken as the music in the gallery mingles with the faint fragrance of magnolias that drifts in through the high French windows. And when we are seated at a table covered with fine linen, sparkling crystal, and shimmering silver, we open the menu and discover such rare and unusual dishes as venison chops with currant jelly, Tennessee opossum baked with sweet potatoes, oranges sliced in Madeira wine, and Maxwell House coffee. Yes, we're at the old Maxwell House in Nashville, Tennessee, known 50 years ago all over the South for its famous cuisine. The coffee we enjoy is the coffee all Nashville is talking about. It's a new blend just created by a man named Joel Cheek. Yes, that was over 50 years ago. Since that time, the fame of this wonderfully delicious coffee has spread across the length and breadth of this country, has made and held millions of friends. But today, Joel Cheek's original Maxwell House blend is even richer, more delicious, more downright satisfying than ever before. And for two very good reasons. First, because we've found a way to blend Maxwell House to a new perfection of flavor and body, a rich, mellow flavor you'll find in no other coffee. Second, there's the new radiant roast process, which roasts each coffee bean evenly all the way through. It brings out the true, natural flavor of this wonderfully enriched new blend. With Radiant Roast, there's no chance of weak coffee due to under-roasting or bitter coffee due to parching. Now, that's why more people are buying Maxwell House today than ever before in its history. Why don't you try it? Get upon tomorrow, won't you? Your own enjoyment and satisfaction will tell you this new Maxwell House is now, more than ever, good to the last drop. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. Tonight there seems to be an air of mystery in the house. It is way past midnight, and Daddy, played by Henley Stafford, is seated in in his dim study, poring over some curious books and making frequent notes and signs on scraps of paper. Let's him look in very quietly. Shh. Hmm. Progress moon, Venus in Mercury, definite cosmic urge. Hmm. Looks like I'll play Blue Nose in the fifth of the odds are right. Hi, Daddy. Snooks. (laughs) Did I scare you? Look, it's almost one o'clock. What are you doing out of bed? The blanket slipped off. Well, what of it? I had to get out and tuck myself in. I see. Well, get in and tuck yourself out. Go on, be off with you. What are you doing, Daddy? Why, I'm I'm working. Yes, I have a very important uh, business deal on tomorrow. Why are you looking at those books? They're astrology books. I'm consulting the stars. Why? On account of this big business deal. You wouldn't understand. Now, go on to bed. All right. Daddy! What is it? Is it the same deal you were working on last night? Yes. Did that horse win? <laughs> Snooks, how do you know I'm playing the horses? I know. Well, don't snoop around so much. <laughs> if she wasn't my own child, I'd swear she was a witch. Huh? Nothing. I'll go to bed and don't dawdle. I want to dawdle, I want to doodle, I want to doodle. <laughs> oh, stop that. And put that book down. <laughs> What is it, Dad? I told you it's an astrology book. What's astrology? It's the art of judging the influences of the stars upon human affairs and of foretelling events by their positions and aspects to form horoscopes. Good night. Good night. What's horoscopes? Oh, look. Take your birthday, for example. Is it my birthday, Daddy? No. Why? Because you were born in August. How do you know? I have good reason to remember it. <laughs> Why? Never mind why. The fact remains that you were born on the 31st of August. And that brings you under the sign of Virgo. Does it? Yes. And the day you were born, Mars was in Capricorn. I thought you were home. Who? Ma. I didn't say Ma, I said Mars. Who's she? Mars is not a she, it's the name of a planet. And Capricorn is one of the astrological positions or signs. Capricorn is the goat. Why? Because that's what it means. 
And there's Leo the lion and Cancer the crab and... Uh... I'm fleeing down the bull. <laughs> no, that's Taurus the bull. I was born under that sign. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? I don't know. Well, this is no time to learn astrology. You're going to bed. I'm hungry. Well, what do you want? I want some ice cream, some pie, some chocolate cake. Oh, you do, eh? Well, you'll take a piece of apple and like it. No, I won't. Now, listen here, Snooks. When I was a youngster like you, I didn't have chocolate cake and, and stuff like that. I was lucky to get a crust of bread. Oh. Daddy. What? Aren't you glad you're living with us now? <laughs> You'll never learn to appreciate anything. Why, I used to work 14 hours a day just to get the bare necessities. Get the bare what? Necessities. Groceries. Did you have a bear, Daddy? Of course not. <laughs> then why did you have to get him groceries? I got the groceries for myself. Did you give any to the bear? There wasn't any bear. I'm trying to tell you how hungry I was. I was almost starved. So you know what I did? You ate the bear. I didn't eat any bears. I didn't see any bears. I just worked very hard. Why? To keep the wolf away from the door. Did the wolf? Did the wolf eat the bear? No, there wasn't any wolf either. The bear I'm talking about isn't a bear, and the wolf isn't a wolf. It's just a figure of speech. You can't see that kind of wolf, and you can't hear him. Then how did you know he was at the door? My stomach told me. I had a gnawing there. Did you eat the wolf, too? Nobody eats wolves! Why? Because they don't! Oh. Why were you so hungry, Daddy? Because I worked so hard. I had to ride a horse over miles of land and herd cattle. You rode a horse? Yes. I had to ride about 15 miles from the farmhouse. And what's worse, I had to ride bareback. Why didn't you ride the horse back, Daddy? <laughs> I did ride the horseback. Then who rode the bear? Nobody. Forget the bear. I rode the horse both ways, but I rode bareback. That means without a saddle, no seat. The bear didn't have no seat? Well, I'll go to sleep. Go on, get into bed. Mm, tell me a story. I can't remember any stories. Mm, tell me a story about the 40 thieves. No. You're too young to understand politics. <laughs> I told you this is an astrology book. It has no stories. Now, look. That's a story, ain't it, Daddy, that one? What? That? Mm -hmm. No, that's an article on hypnosis. Hypnosis. Hmm. <laughs> what is it, Daddy? Nothing. Just let me see this for a second. Mm-hmm. Come here, Snooks. I, uh, I want to try something. Huh? Look me in the eye. I don't want to. What you making those faces for? You are under my spell. I am your master. You will obey me. You will go to bed and to sleep. 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 What do you think you're doing, Daddy? <laughs> I'm hypnotizing you. Sleep. 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 <laughs> I'm sleeping. Ah, oh, what's the use? Make me again, Daddy. Make no. Me. I know. I'll make you stay out of bed. No, you can't. <laughs> I'll get right in. All right, get in. But well, I'll bet I can make you get out. Let me see you do it. Okay. Get under the covers. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when I say get out for the third time, you'll get out. The third time? Yes. <laughs> but you can't make me. I am your master. Get out. I won't. Now, this is the second time. You must obey me. Get out. I won't. <laughs> All right, stay there until I tell you to get out the third time. Good night. Good night. Ah! <laughs> 